Hi guys, Solo here again and today we're gonna talk about part 2 of the HRouter setup and this time around we're gonna show you how to set up your guest Wi-Fi network using Unify and HRouter. I got this package from Amazon a couple of weeks ago and this is the Unify access point which we're gonna use as a part of our infrastructure to provide uh, Wi-Fi network and also to provide guest Wi-Fi network as well. So let's do some unboxing. So I got Unify a long range access point as a design and part of my infrastructure which I want to implement. And the reason I took long range is it's relatively fast speed, it's still wireless AC. But the good thing is about this access point is the range is about 600, 600 feet. So that's the main reason. So let's do unboxing. So as you can see this is Unify. Uh, Ubiquiti Unify AP Access Point AC LR. LR meaning long range. And it's doing 5 GHz and 2.4. And the speed is 1300 megabit per second. Okay, so here it is. Let's open it up. So as you can see out of the box right away, we got Unify. That's a normal, that's a software design networking and there is a lot of products for Unify which you can integrate into your infrastructure. So that goes here, we got our access point which is UFO shaped and it can be mounted on the wall or usually mounted on the ceiling. And the AC long range has only got one connector which is uh, providing access to the network and also providing um, power over Ethernet. Okay. It's also got mountain brackets for the ceiling as well. Got cable, which is power cable, and it's got um, adapter, and it's got adapter which is converting a normal LAN signal and providing also power over Ethernet, which will be used to power this access point. So this is it. More papers about ubiquity product and how to set it up we'll look at it later and also some mountain screws that's it okay guys so let's look on the following diagram because this is essentially what we are planning to do here so we have our H router which is our default gateway to internet we're also going to introduce unify platform here and on unify we're going to build guest wi-fi so guest wi-fi we're going to assign dedicated vlan and I have set the range of the IP addresses which is quite different from what I have on my main LAN here and that's the range which we're gonna have uh, presented to our DHCP clients on the Wi-Fi on the guest network. At the same time this Unify um, access point will provide access, normal access for Wi-Fi clients which are inside my network as well. So let's look at it in more details and we're gonna go step by step from edge router to the switch and then to Unify. All right, let's do it. Okay, so from the H router side, you see interface on the H router right now here. You'll have to create additional interface. I call it interface 10. And you, the way you do it, you do add and then add VLAN. And then it will ask you what interface you want your in, uh, additional VLAN to reside on. And we select like um, Ethernet 0 because this is my local network. And I call it VLAN 10 over here and you can put descriptions like guest VLAN, which is exactly what I have here. So essentially that's going to be building you this, right? And then um, if you look on the settings and the config on this, you have to go and set up manually IP address range and that's where you're going to have um, select your network IP addresses which you want to present to your guest network. I selected 172, 1642, 1 and I have 128 IP addresses, that's why I have 25 here, not 24. I think it's going to be more than enough for the guest network. Alright, the next thing we'll have to do, we'll have to set up some firewall rules because you don't want your guest clients to be to have access to your local network and they, you, they also, you also don't want to have your guests to be able to go to the router and change the configuration of the router. So we'll have to add two rules at least to accomplish this task. For that we will go to firewall and inside firewall policy we'll have to add two new rule sets. So first one is guest VLAN in 
and the other one is guest VLAN local. The, the guest VLAN in policy will allow you to control traffic going through the interface so it will pass through but it will not be able to go to your local network. So if you go and say edit rule set, that's what we have to do. So basically go on and set up the new rules and say drop access to 192.168.1.0, which is my local network. And we got a protocol all and action is drop, right? And we go and say that that rule is applicable to interface Interface 0, is if net 0, uh, VLAN 10. That's the interface which we created. And direction is in. So anything which is going through this interface, which will try to access uh, my local network will be dropped. But if it is just going outside the internet, it will pass through. All right, so the second rule is we get uh, guest VLAN local. That one is for drop in access if you try directly access with the router from the uh, from the guest Wi-Fi. So if we go and say rule set, it says drop everything going to 172.16.42.1 which is for guest network is IP address of my edge router which is provided with all infrastructure and the interfaces. And um, we're also going to say that address 172.16.42.1 all protocol drop and we're also going to assign it to Ethernet 0 uh, VLAN 10 and direction is going to be local meaning that the traffic is going to local to that uh, router itself and for that rule we're going to say if it's going local to that IP address we're going to drop all the traffic this way we will protect the edge router from uh, unauthorized access from the guest network and any attempts to change configuration without your knowledge alright so next stop is now we have to provide services for the new created guest network and those services will include DNS and DHCP so for that we will go to services tab right here and first one we're gonna go and create guest uh, DHCP server guest DHCP server will have to provide the pool size and the list time you can change that and for that I created guest VLAN uh, that's my name of the DHCP server the way you do it you just do that add uh, DHCP server and you specify all the necessary parameters so for example here you will put guest VLAN here you will put your subnet which is in my case 172.16.42.0.25 and then you specify your range uh, IP addresses you want to provide uh, if you want to give them only like half of the range or maybe full range it's really up to you and the router you specify your uh, 172.16.42.1 which is going to be router for the guest network but let's see how it's done on my side so that's if we go and go uh, view details that's exactly what we have so as you can see I limited my pool size to only 31 IP addresses for the guest network and I specify my router 172.16.42.1 my first DNS server is the router itself of course and my second DNS server is something like Google provides 8.8.8.8 or you can set up any other public DNS available on the internet. That way your clients will receive IP addresses and they will have two DNS servers assigned and they're going to be part of the guest network. And if you need more clients, you can just change the number of available, update that configuration and change the number of available uh, lizard IP addresses. Uh, the next thing we will need to add is DNS. Uh, this step is sometimes overlooked, but it's very simple to add on the Edge Router Max. All you have to do is just, you have already your DNS settings and this is what you have to do, just add one more interface, which I did this. Internet, Ethernet 0 uh, VLAN 10, I just need to add that to DNS, so DNS infrastructure will be provided to the all, all the clients connected to that VLAN as well. That's pretty much it, and then you click save, and your configuration will be ready for accepting new clients. Next step, we'll have to do some work on the switch. If you have switch, which is normal consumer switch without any smart capabilities, then you can skip that step because it's not relevant for you. But if it is, uh, if your switch has uh, smart capabilities and it's manageable switch, then you'll have to do some work on the switch as well. In my case, I have Cisco switch here, which is 26 port gigabit switch. And for that, we need to do some steps. First of all, we get to we have to add that VLAN information to the switch as well. So it, it is aware that the traffic is going to be coming from VLAN 10 as well. So for that, we'll go to switch management over here. You go create VLAN and you have to add VLAN, which as I did already, I call it guest VLAN name and VLAN ID should match what we have on our diagram which is right here 
and as you can see it's VLAN 10. So, right, the next thing is you have to go and do port to VLAN mapping and that's pretty simple to do. So by default your ports will be all enabled on the VLAN ID 1 which is default and as you can see everything on the trunk ports which is my trunk port here 25 and 26 everything is untagged and you don't really have to do anything on that screen. So what you will see in, in addition you will see your VLAN 10 you just created and then you go to here and this is where the changes will have to take place. First of all your trunk ports which are coming from your uh, edge router to your switch on this diagram it's this link over here this link right so if you have my ports are for this particular uplink is 25 and 26 so we'll have to work on those and the switch uh, port which is coming to the another switch which would have in turn connected to the uh, my unify that's port 17 and um, we'll have to tag that port as well for VLAN 10 so basically what you do here your trunk port should be tagged because they're already set as a trunk but they have to be able to uh, recognize the traffic for VLAN 10 so for VLAN ID 10 we're gonna set them to tag because by default they set to exclude it and over here on port 17 which would have my unify connected access point I have to get that port tag for that traffic as well so uh, by default again it's excluded so I put this um, checker over here to tag. You will have some notes here to update your configuration on the switch. Once that's done you save everything and we can start right now working on Unify side. So now we'll have to download and install Unify controller from Ubiquiti website. So as you can see access point is currently not found so I have to reset it again because it's discovered on the iPhone already. Now just follow configuration steps to complete the setup. For now we're just going to skip cloud login. So this is my Unify interface, so yeah, I'm going to log in. So that's what you're going to see by default. Get some settings done on Unify side to make sure that VLAN 10 is recognized as a guest network. Because by default you will have original access to your primary network but it will not be able to pass through the traffic from the guest network and this is what it's all about. So you go to settings, wireless network, add additional wireless network, which is going to be guest. So I did it already and I set it up to VLAN 10, the same ID, and I set guest network as yes. So I'm going to click on edit just to show you what is done here. The same way it's when you click add, the same thing will apply. So I call it guest. I have enabled wireless network. I have personal uh, WPA personal uh, as a protection. My password is here. You call it, uh, this is very important, you go to advanced options which are closed like that by default, you open it up and you set it up to use VLAN 10. This is important for that particular setup, otherwise it will not know which VLAN to use and your guests will not be working. And you have to set up the user group as well. By default you will have here default group and originally your guest group will not exist but this is done to limit the traffic. If you don't want to limit traffic for the actual guest network to limit the upload and download speeds and uh, then you don't have to do it, just can leave it on default. Uh, on user groups I created the guest user group and what I did I limit my download and my upload right so that anything which will apply to user group guest will have these settings and it's gonna throttle down all the internet speeds on that particular guest network. So by default, if you don't have anything else from Unify family, all of those circles, including like guests and gorgeous and throughputs and latency, all of those will not be available for you. To activate those, you will need to have Unify's family of the switches. And you'll have to get Unify security gateway, which is separate device, to traffic to capture your traffic and get your statistics for the throughput. But this is not impact in any way the speed of the infrastructure which, which I have here because uh, Edge Router family does not really talk well to Unify platform and none of the statistics from the Edge Router provided to Unify uh, control management interface. So for that you will need to go to actual Edge Router and look on the dashboards and you'll have exactly the same data. From Unify management interface, you can actually control things of the wireless uplink and uh, speed of the radios and uh, for wireless AC for example you have some statistics as well 
and you can change configurations for your radios and if you see that your radio is not going very well on distance as expected you can set it up to high over here I did it I did that test I set up to high and my speed actually increased on the wireless AC links uh, on the distances which are not far away from my home but um, in general there is not much difference between auto and high what makes difference is if you change that channel to which is by default on 40 you have to change it up and bump it up to 80 that will give you more speed and more secure traffic control over the Wi-Fi signal which you have now uh, there are some recommendations to bump it up either to this range on Wi-57 153 but uh, depends on your load and we'll look at it on the a little bit later uh, depends on the load on the network around you you can actually select the traffic and change the channel to the least busy ones I have channel 11 right now and channel 157 used. Using the Wi-Fi analyzer you can find less busy channels. Okay, so now we can do guest Wi-Fi testing. So as you can see I setting up my guest Wi-Fi on the iPhone. And it's got my IP addresses as expected on the range of 172.16.42.2. And now we're just gonna go ahead and do refresh on some applications and that should trigger guest Wi-Fi traffic on the edge router. And here it is. So those orange spikes as you can see, those represent a traffic on Ethernet 0 VLAN 10, which is our guest network. From the Wi-Fi speed, this product declares 1300 megabit per second. In fact, it's not really the case, as you can see. Probably PDF shows correct speed of 866 megabit per second. If you need 1300, you'll have to buy AC Pro. Okay, guys, so here we have a quick review of Ubiquiti Long Range Access Point and steps on how to set up guest network properly. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, uh, click subscribe button and share it with your friends. So, until next time, Peace.